بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر محمد عدنان ورکنگ ایز اسسٹنٹ پروفیسر ان دا ڈپارٹمنٹ آف فزکس کوہاٹ یونیورسٹی آف سائنس اینڈ ٹیکنالوجی آئی ویلکم یو ٹو دی کورس پی ایچ وائی تھری فائیو ٹو نیوکلیئر فزکس ون ٹوڈے اٹ از دی ٹوینٹی تھرڈ لیکچر آف دس کورس اینڈ دی ٹاپک از نیوکلیئر سیمیٹری انرجی In the last lecture, we have discussed the Fermi gas model for the nucleon-nucleon interaction and based on this Fermi gas model, today we will be talk about the nuclear symmetry energy. First, I will give the learning objective. At the end of this lecture, the student will understand the concept of symmetry energy associated with the proton neutron number if you remember uh, in the first part of this course we have uh, discussed the semi empirical mass formula and there in the binding energy expression uh, we have discussed the asymmetry term so that asymmetry uh, in the proton and neutron number give rise to increase the system energy and as a result decreases the binding energy so in this lecture we will be talk about the same asymmetry term that we have already discussed in the uh, uh, semi empirical mass formula but today we will be uh, discussing the mathematical uh, derivation of the symmetry energy based on the fermi gas model in this course uh, we are following the book introductory nuclear physics by kenneth s crane third edition in this lecture i have taken some of the illustrations from this book as i told you uh, in the earlier lecture we have discussed the semi empirical mass formula so in lecture number 11 we have discussed the binding energy uh, 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 and the binding energy per nucleon curve uh, for uh, for the uh, stable elements nuclei and there we have discussed that uh, uh, this binding energy per nucleon curve can be modeled through this semi empirical formalism which is partly based on physical assumption and partly it is empirical just to fit this distribution of the binding energy per nucleon in that lecture we have discussed that the first three uh, component or three terms in the binding energy expression are inspired from the liquid drop model that is the volume term the surface energy and the coulombic energy and the last two term uh, the asymmetry term and the pairing term these are the quantum corrections so these are uh, these are the uh, term which we have discussed in lecture number 11 if you remember uh, in that lecture we have taken this expression for the binding energy regarding the asymmetry in the proton and neutron number so if one uh, see here that up till this uh, this portion we can say up till this portion the the proton and neutron number are equal uh, so that the n is equal to z is equal to a is equal to z by 2 and 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 we can say uh, the two numbers are equal the nucleon number for regarding proton and neutron are equal so that there the, this term will will not be there but if you remember we have uh, uh, discussed that uh, uh, these are the uh, the dark pattern or the stable Uh, nuclei and one can see that uh, the 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 nuclei uh, uh, let's say when we are talking about the middle weight or the the heavy weight 
uh, elements uh, so there the n uh, the neutron number will always be greater than the proton number and this n is equal to z line uh, is followed uh, in in the 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 lighter nuclei so there we have discussed in that lecture uh, uh, this this the binding energy uh, contains this term and if you remember we have taken as it is and i told uh, there that uh, we will be uh, uh, deriving this uh, symmetry term uh, in the later part of this course uh, when we will, will be uh, discussing the nuclear models so now since we have discussed the uh, fermi gas model so now we are in a position to uh, discuss this mathematical expression that we have uh, taken uh, uh, in the semi empirical mass formula regarding the asymmetry in the proton and neutron number also we have discussed in that lecture uh, uh, this asymmetry in the the proton and neutron number once there is a symmetry that is n minus z is equal to zero so that the system energy is lower compared to the situation where neutron are more since neutron are uh, uh, are greater than the proton uh, uh, in order for the nuclei to get stable so uh, in this case once there lies uh, asymmetry in the proton neutron number so that the system energy increases and hence the binding energy needs to be decreased by this amount so we'll be talking about this expression in this lecture how one can obtain the the asymmetry potential uh, uh, by, while working with the fermi gas model so uh, the fermi gas model uh, were discussed uh, that neutron potential well is deeper than the proton one since the former has no coulomb interaction in the last lecture lecture number 22 we have discussed these aspects the the, the two wells are slightly uh, uh, different in terms of their depth that is the potential associated with the proton proton and the neutron neutron interaction so because of the coulombic force uh, uh, since that coulombic force is repulsive between the proton and proton so that the the depth or the associated potential with the nuclear nuclear interaction uh, for the proton proton case is somehow less deeper than the neutron neutron also uh, for a stable nucleus the fermi level of the proton and neutron have to be the same otherwise it will decay to an energetically more favorable state through the beta transition if you uh, remember that we have discussed uh, on this plot in the in the previous lecture uh, regarding the beta plus and beta minus decay in order for the nuclei to come to uh, uh this this uh, stable region so uh this n is equal to z is uh, uh is always favorable for most of the nuclei so that the asymmetry uh, is uh, there so as a result uh uh there are more neutron state than the proton state occupied which explain the fact that n is equal to z for heavier heavier stable nuclei as we have seen that n is equal to z is only possible for the lighter case and for for the intermediate or heavier stable nuclei the n is equal to z always holds regarding that observational curve so the binding energy as a function of nz that is neutron and proton number can be estimated using the fermi gas model the mean kinetic energy for the nucleon can be worked out using the fermi gas model and there there is this fermi uh, momentum uh, that the average definition is used just to calculate the the average energy that that is written in terms of the momentum so that the total kinetic energy of the nucleus is the sum of uh, the two uh, uh, shell as we have discussed uh, there are two wells so there we have two 
uh, energy level diagram we can say in another word and if you remember in my last lecture we have discussed uh, these two expression for the for the num for the neutron and proton number regarding those uh, available states for these two kinds of nucleons uh, if you remember we have discussed that one can obtain these number from the uh, density of states that is the number of available states uh, within a spherical volume uh, this v is representation of the spherical volume and this is the fermi momentum for the neutron and that is for the proton so in order to evaluate that total kinetic energy so we need to put this n here and this z here so that we can have the total kinetic energy of the nucleus so if we use that uh, uh, the, those two expression here so that the average kinetic energy of the nucleus in terms of the note neutron and proton number can be find out now since we are interested in the asymmetry energy so that uh, we will uh, uh, take uh, this expression uh, uh, regarding the symmetry case and then the asymmetry case again the radii of the proton and neutron potential well have taken uh, well have been taken as equal just for the simplicity uh, in my last lecture we have uh, made those assumptions clear that uh, we need to make the nuclear nuclear interaction as weak and then we need to make uh, spherical nucleus and then we have to take the nuclear and proton potential well as equal just to make the 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 nature of this asymmetry potential so this result can now be expanded around the symmetric case that is once n is equal to z is equal to a by 2 so then uh, in that situation uh, uh, there will be no asymmetry term uh, uh, regarding this expansion as you will see we'll use the binomial expansion uh, in just a minute so for that uh, we need to uh, expand uh, this thing uh, that is if uh, that is the situation n is equal to z so that there will be no asymmetry so let's say that there lies an asymmetry that is n minus z that is the difference between the neutron and proton number is equal to some some number and then z proton plus neutron is equal to the total number of nucleons so that if we use uh, this uh, if we just uh, uh, use these two expression and find out the value of neutron and proton in terms of this epsilon so one can find out just uh, uh, add, add and subtract this expression and then uh, using uh, using or calculate the value of either uh, z or n and then put that ex value uh, in either of these two expression one can find out that z will be equal to half minus something that is the z the proton number will be somehow lesser than the half and the the neutron number will be somehow greater than uh, the 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 half uh, nuclear number so that if we use that expression that we have worked out for the average uh, kinetic energy uh, for a nucleus in terms of proton uh, proton and neutron number and then using this exp expansion uh, binomial expansion so that uh, 1 plus x power n can can give us uh, this value that is if we use the n and z uh, 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 expression from the last slide and expanding uh, in that fashion so that this average kinetic energy for a nucleus will be having the volume term and then we have this first order term uh, which is uh, dependent on this n minus z that is the difference between uh, the asymmetry in number
So if we put this n is equal to z, that is, there is no asymmetry in the proton neutron number, so that this whole factor will go go away. That is, will be equal to zero, and there will be no asymmetry uh, energy associated with that nucleus. So it is clear that for a fixed A, uh, that is, uh, as discussed in uh, in our previous lecture, the kinetic energy has a minimum for n is equal to z. When n is equal to z, so that this will be the minimum kinetic energy. Otherwise, if n minus z uh, is not equal to zero, so there will be an extra uh, energy available for that system. So that, uh, if you remember, in our last, in the lecture number 11, we have discussed that uh, this will, the asymmetry will decrease the binding energy. The first term corresponds to the volume energy, as we have discussed, and the second term has exactly the same form of the symmetry energy in the semi-empirical mass formula. Instead of this 5 or 9, uh, we have uh, there the asymmetry uh, coefficient. So, we can write this in terms of the volume constant and the asymmetry constant, and then this is the same expression that we have used in the semi-empirical mass formula regarding the asymmetry in the proton-neutron number, and that give rise to some kind of energy. That is, it increases the overall energy of the system, and then that means the binding energy will be decreased. So, in our binding energy expression regarding the semi-empirical mass formula, this term is negative. But since in, in the expression for the kinetic energy, this is positive. So, this asymmetry energy, or we can say the energy associated with the difference in the proton uh, and neutron number, uh, uh, that give rise to some kind of uh, energy, uh, increases the system energy, that can be found out using the Fermi gas model. So, since in this part of the course we are not discussing the same empirical uh, formulism, but we have just to find out that this expression is the same as for as taken in the same empirical mass formula. But we are discussing the interaction uh, potential between the nucleon and nucleon inside a nucleus. So that potential uh, we have discussed uh, in the last few lecture. Uh, particularly we have discussed uh, through the uh, two-dimensional potential well a, uh, in case of a deuteron, that is uh, simplest nuclei. And there we have discussed that the well, that is the potential associated with the nuclear force is itself uh, also depend, dependent on the neutron excess n minus z and make up for the missing contribution to the uh, symmetry energy. And that's why we have uh, a weakly uh, bound system. That is the binding energy for a typical system is around 7 to 8 mega electron volt. And for the, for the uh, weakly bound nuclei, the deuteron, it was around 1.1 mega electron volt. So with this, I thank you for